I think we're pretty much ready. If you guys are still sticking around, um, or if you know anyone that wants to be a part of a fun closing speech, by all means, come on in. Oh my gosh, guys. It's been the past three days, hasn't it? Who, who has been here like the majority of the time? Yeah, we, we, have, we have a few of us here. Um, I mean, I've been here all day. I didn't even get to see much of the rest of the DEF CON, but that's okay. So... We've pretty much just got another hour until teardown, uh, which means it's time for the closing speech. For those who don't know, my name is Diego Salazar. Uh, most people on the Monero community know me as RERAR. It's not RERAR, it's not RERAR. There is an H in there, it's silent. It's RERAR. Um, and I've been asked to shut this thing down on a positive note. It's kind of hard because Monero is so down, you know? So, oh, it, it's really, oh. They gave me. <laughs> Uh, so I'll be doing the best I can. Uh, I'll be honest, uh, an hour for a closing speech, I've said this several times over the course, it, it's a bit much. Like, like, how do you feel this time? Uh, but, you know, I'm known in the community for my rants. Like, if, you ever, if you're ever on the, the coffee chat or something, like, SGP always like, don't, don't set them off. Don't, don't set them off. Uh, I'm like, oh, you want to learn about that now, do you? He's like, oh, you, you set them off. All right. So, uh, but I, I'll do my best not to, I'll do my best to have good quality content. Um, so, uh, but you know, an hour is still a long time. So on my phone here, I've got the list of Monero contributors. And I would like to spend the next hour thanking each and every individual Monero contributor. So without further ado, thank you, Monero Moo, wherever you are, whoever you are. Thank you, Gingeropolis, for your community work. Thank you. HYC. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do this all the time. Okay. <laughs> Monero has a lot of contributors. We, we have like more than 500 that have contributed over the past four years. It, it's awesome. So we're pretty big. No, as you can see on this slide, we're going to be doing some, uh, some a game show. Uh, but, no, but for real, I do want to jump back to a few people in particular. Uh, there have been some amazing people that have been around this village that have helped to make it a success. So not just in the Monero community in particular, but this Monero village. And I would like to just uh, give a shout out to these people. Let's see, I've got them right here. Uh, first and foremost, yes, I want to give a huge thanks to Monero's uh, partner in this village, BCOS, BCOS, however you want to say that. They've been awesome. They've been getting us food, um, setting up that website for the uh, call for papers and call for everything. Just thank you guys. I don't know if they're here right now. I don't see any of them. Um, but they exist on some level somewhere. If you were in an anonymous talk, then you know that we can, given enough time and resources, measure where they are. So <laughs> just keep that in mind. Um, so who else? Who else? Um, yeah, they've, just, they've been awesome. I look forward to see what they're going to be doing in the future. Uh, next up, I'd like to thank all of our... Um, all of our sponsors, people who have been at these tables. We've had Tari, we've had Globy. Uh, we did have Alex Glow from Hackster.io. Hackster she, she was uh, around DEF CON and stuff, and she's been, she's been in and out a couple of times. I don't know if, I don't know if you ran into her, but uh, we do want to thank the people that have been manning the tables, Kavri, MRL, that type of stuff. If you've been talking with those guys or asking questions, big thank you to everybody over there. We've had some random people just like step up. Like, for example, Thursday we weren't supposed to be open, and uh, so somebody kind of left the door open. So people were, <laughs> this place was full. And we were having our meeting over there. And we were gone for a couple hours. And this guy that I had never met before, Daniel, he just like popped up. He's like, oh, I can answer all the technical questions. And like, he saved the day. He is the hero. So if, if you see him, give him a high five and tip him some Monero. Uh, so I, I wanted to make sure to give... Um, to give him a shout out, thank you so much for everything you did, Daniel. Uh, lastly, we have a number of volunteers who selfly gave of their time to make sure we have everything covered. Chief among these, uh, and see, there's a lot of prep work that went into this before actually coming here. So we've had people like Michael and people like XMR Scott and stuff. If you, if you go to our taiga, taiga.getmonero.org, you can see like all of this being planned out in the Vegas. Uh, in the Vegas uh, project is what it's called. Uh, Anonymal, uh, Suray and Suray Nother, Sean, Anonymal, um, Cinnamon Flower, Power Cycle, who put on the party last night, which, yeah, uh, Arctic Mine, and I could go on and on and on. Let's just give these people a round of applause just for all the hard work that they've done. It's awesome. Thank you, guys. 
I, I consider this village a, a big success. I think it was a lot of fun, and I would love to come back next year and do something similar. Uh, any other volunteers that I didn't say, please don't get offended. I can't talk about everyone, otherwise I would break my promise about not thanking people for an hour. Right? So, um, we're going to be moving on. We're going to be moving on to something uh, fun. This Monero game show that we've got going on here. I am going to need three volunteers. Three volunteers. Who wants to take part? It's just a simple trivia. It's just testing how much you know, who you know, when you know, all that different type of stuff. And there are prizes. There are prizes for winning. And if no, uh, you know what? If nobody volunteers, maybe I'll just do it myself. Um, Michael is out there, and he's got one of my prizes. If someone can, can kind of poke his shoulder and say, can you, can you come in here because, because we really need some stuff? But I do have some other stuff in my backpack, which hopefully nobody has stolen. I'm just going to grab it from behind this thing. This is where I hide all my stuff. Now you know. Ugh. That's bad OPSEC to do it in front of everybody. But the video camera didn't catch it. So th that's what matters. So just one moment while I take this stuff out. So um, we have three fantastic little guys here. We've got this guy. We've got this guy. I'm going to put him right here. This fits right there. There we go. And then we've, we've got, I don't know what this is, but I bought it. And so, <laughs> so these, these are uh, participants' awards, uh, also known as Everybody Gets a Trophy. But we do have one of those cool uh, things that he were giving out the last time. What are they called? Yeah, Chip Whisper. The, that's going to go to the winner of this. So is, is Michael around or is he not? See, this is really good for killing time for an hour. This is, this is why, you know, it's, it's awesome. But if he's not there, then maybe we'll just get, uh, The winner will get one. Okay, so I might not have it on me. Who wants to be a part of this? It's just a simple, sim simple trivia type thing. Let me see a show of hands. Yes, everybody. Okay, I got one volunteer. I got, was that two? You, you have to, you're you're going to have to come over onto the stage. You have to go, come onto the stage. So we got one, we got two. I just need one more. You, I'm sorry, but tip, regular Monero contributors cannot, cannot be a part. That, that, I should have said that. And okay, we got three. Great, great. Let's give them a round of applause, everybody. Thank you for coming up here. Let's let's go ahead and introduce yourselves. Um, if you want to go by a pseudonym, you are go for it. Um, and uh, give me your favorite color as well. Uh, let's go ahead and have scoot down just a little bit so we don't uh, mess with the projector. So actually, I don't have any handles, so probably I'll just. Uh, so I was thinking something like radioactive. What do you think about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, or maybe Ari. A new star is born. Radio. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, I'm blue is my favorite color. Okay. And what do you do? Um, I'm a developer. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Hey guys, my name is Nick. That's my handle. Um, so my favorite color is green, and uh, I'm a cybersecurity engineer. Hi, my name is Alex. I'm from Brazil. Uh, my favorite color is blue also. And I, I work as a system engineer. So we have Alex, we have Nick, and we have Radioactive. Let's give them a quick round of applause. And you know, we, we, can make this, we can make this a little personal because there's not a ton of people here, so we don't have to be super professional, that type of stuff. So like, um, I want audience participation in this, okay? So when somebody gets a question right, we're all gonna snap. Okay, we're all gonna snap. There we go. Okay, when somebody gets a question wrong, if they, if they think they know the answer, they get it wrong. We're all gonna say, "Oh." Okay, so let's let's practice that. Let's give it a go. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. Okay, and uh, so how you are going to signal that you think you know the answer is you're just gonna shoot up your hand, and the first person to shoot up their hands, I'm gonna give them the microphone, and then you are going to answer the question. We have 11 questions, and I, I'm going to need the audience to also help me keep track of who has how many points, okay? Because I don't want to be a single point of failure here. I don't want to be the trusted person that I can choose who wins, okay? So this is all about decentralization. It's all you guys. So the questions are gonna be up on this screen. Let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, uh, it's sad that we, don't have, that we don't have music, so I'm just gonna have to beatbox into this microphone or something like that, but. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a, give it a go. We ready? 
Woo, 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 woo. Okay, there we go. We're getting something. So, Monero, what language does the word Monero come from? Okay, we got Alex. Monero is from Spanish. This is incorrect. Oh, okay, okay. Radioactive. Italian. Oh, this is also incorrect. Okay. Russian. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what to do in this situation <laughs> where each of our participants has gotten this wrong. But that's okay. Uh, nobody, gets, nobody gets this point. These, these points are burned, okay? Um, <laughs> The, the word Monero comes from the language of Esperanto, which is a decentralized language. It does not have a nation. It was made by people. Uh, well, I guess all language was, made, was kind of made by people, if you think about it. But, so, that's, that's okay. That's okay, guys. You'll have ten other chances, and hopefully... <laughs> hopefully <you laughs> all right. So, who originally launched Monero? Okay. Fluffy Pony? Oh, it is, it is not Fluffy Pony. This is a common misconception. People think that he started the project. He's the lead developer. He's not. He just sometimes merges pull requests when he feels like it every other month. Okay, so radioactive. Thankful for today. D this is correct. Um, <laughs> but which, which one do you think that it is? <laughs> which one do you think that it is? A, B, or C? Which, what's the spelling? A. A? This, this is not correct. Oh. Uh, C. This is correct! With snap, 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 snap. There we go. We gotta be cool here, guys. Come on. We gotta be cool. All right, so we have one point for Alex over here. We're gonna move on to the next question. What is the name of Monero's hardware wallet project? Okay, okay, take a guess. Monero Open Hardware Project. Mope, this is incorrect. Oh. Would you, you know what, Nick? I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to phone a friend. <laughs> okay. Who are you, who you gonna call? You, you can phone a friend in this room. You can choose one person who you think will know the answer to this question. Okay, so come on, come on down. Come on down. It's B. <laughs> this is correct. Costello. So we got one point for Nick over here. I'm sorry, every, I'm, dude, I, I totally robbed you. You had this. You really did. Um, but it's okay. This is also Esperanto. Yes, Castello is Esperanto for castle. There you go. And yeah, be, you know, basically a fortress type thing where the idea is that it will protect your money. It's a fortress for you. Okay, what specifications is Kavri based on? Who was here for an animal's talk? Okay, okay. Uh, Tor? Oh, it's not Tor. A? A? A, I2P. There we go. That is correct. We've got two points for Nick over here, one point for Alex, and the guy with the coolest name, Radioactive, he's sitting at the bottom. But don't worry. He's got, th uh, my bet is on Radioactive. This, my bet is on Radioactive. Let's be real. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. The pseudonyms of the Monero Research Lab researchers have the same last name. What is it? A. Nonce, this is incorrect. Oh, this is sad. Okay, yes. D. This is correct. We have Surrey Nother, Surang Nother, we, had, we have Stafu Nother, and then we had Shen Nother. And so it's an inside joke among them. And they kind of start to regret that at, at different points in time. I, I, I would think that Dr. Privacy is the way to go, but nobody asks for my opinions on these types of things. Okay, which of these people is not a Monero core team member? C. 
Noodle Doodle is a member of the core team. You can imagine that people who are uh, funded by the forum funding system and kind of work for Monero, they're like, yeah, my boss is this, these community members and stuff, and like the people who pay me, Arctic Mine, oh, I, I gave something about Noodle Doodle, and like, it's, it's so, th these are their bosses, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's hard, to, it's hard to say that, but all right. B. Binary Fate is a member of the Monero core team. Th that leaves only one option because I've already said something else. But so it's you. Oh, great. You would say, hey, Arctic Mine is sitting right there and he is a member of the Monero core team. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you guys one more chance. You know, you know what? Radioactive, it's all you. Okay, there's only one option left, but I want you, I want you to pronounce this name correctly. And if you do, you will get this point. G. Abrun. I'm going to give you the point because I have no idea how this is pronounced. <laughs> De Bruni. So let's go and give him a snap. He's got another point. All right. So uh, how many points does Radioactive have? Two. How many points does Nick have? How many points does Alex have? Oh, okay. This, now's your chance to tie this up, man. You got this. All right. Here we go. What was the first coin to implement the crypto note protocol? Noodle Doodle is. Taco Time is not. Yes. I'm on top of it, dude. <laughs> oh! <laughs> okay. So I'm going to say C. C. Bitcoin did not implement the crypto note protocol. Monero. Monero was not the first, unfortunately. Uh -oh. uh, a. Bitcoin. Bitcoin is correct. Bitcoin launched the crypto note protocol and it was a scam. So then there was a fair launch that was also a scam that the community took over and made not a scam. And that coin is now Monero. Um, just just as, a, as a fun question, here's kind of a bonus round. What was Monero's original name? Bit Monero, yes, okay. I will give you a deck of cards. All right, next question. When was Monero launched? Two thousand sixteen. This is incorrect. It was not twenty sixteen. Oh everybody oh. I'm gonna say twenty fourteen. It, that is correct. It was 2014. Let's go and give them snaps. Give them snaps. So we have two, three, and one. Don't worry. Oh, two. Oh, oh. I'm trying. See, I'm I'm constantly trying to just uh, kind of get Alex out of here. You guys have to keep me in check. I cannot be the trusted third party for this. What's, oh, I have to add this to the blockchain. I'm going to start an ICO for this Monero game show. So that way, it becomes a trustless thingy. But anyway, you know what I'm saying. Sorry. What would the token be called? Oh, Diego coin. My gosh, it's going to sell out in seconds. All right, don't worry. Remember, even if you lose, you will get a consolation prize. And I may let the, the biggest loser choose which one they want. Uh, what privacy technology does Monero use? OK. E. That is correct. None of the above. Let's give them. We do not use dark gravity wave mining. We don't use the Wraith protocol. And we do not use ZK Starks. I wish we would implement all these things. I don't. <laughs> all right. We are coming up on the close. So what is it? Two, four, and two. What does Monero mean in Esperanto? Uh, money. This is actually a common misconception. It is not correct. Oh. It does mean coin. In Esperanto, Monero means coin. So if you think about the original name, Bit Monero, he was trying to say Bitcoin, but with a little tweak to that, if you think about it, right? So Mono means money. 
And just a little Esperanto lesson for you guys here. Mano means money, and putting er in there kind of makes it a small diminutive unit of money, which is a coin. All right, so we have two, four, and three. There's still a chance to turn this around with the bonus round. You know how, you know how it always happens, though, like the bonus round has all of the points for some reason, so it makes the entire thing invalid? We're not going to do that. But I will give three points, which will basically decide this. <laughs> to this bonus round. Monero is known for its self-deprecating humor. It's a sign of our confidence. We are very confident in our coin, and we just, you'll, it's not uncommon if you're just hanging out with us. It's, Monero's the worst coin. We are the worst. It, it, we, we just deserve to die, all this type of stuff. So name two of the commonly used other names that Monero is known by within the community. Hmm. Hmm. This shows that you guys need to get involved. <laughs> you know what? Whoever can answer this, I have a t-shirt. I, I, I will give a free t-shirt with many of these names written on it to whoever has it. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up. I, I have to decide how I'm going to do this. Okay, no, you, you, you three, you three come up on stage real quick. I want the hands up of whoever has the answer to this question. Okay, hands up, hands up. Okay, we need to decide who, who, because they all know the answer. We need to decide who to give this, this t-shirt to, okay? So, um, who, who wants it more? Like, let, let's, let's see, let's see. Okay, HYC is kind of doing a jig over there. Um, the guy in the, okay, he, he's, holding, he's holding his hand pretty high up. Yeah? yeah. All right, that's the decision. This is Binary Fate. Another Monero Core team member, go ahead and come up onto the stage and you can answer this question. I'm sorry, I just completely ruined your OPSEC, but it's the way that it is. Um, I would say Moreno and Montero. Montero, okay. They, yep, they're, they, there's many, 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 like Romerito, Romero, Morano, all these different types of things. And uh, thank you, Binary Fate. You get a free T-shirt. All right, what is our ending standings here? We have how many points? Four, four, five, five, five. So we have a hard fork here where one has him with five and one has him with four. Which is it? Five. Okay. We've reached consensus. We have merged the, the forks back together. And we have two. And then we have two. I thought it was... Okay, two. All right. So you guys, go ahead and come on over here. You can choose your consolation prize. Choose the ones that you want. There, there's this... Okay. You, you want the hedgehog. That's, that's fine. Okay, and so you, you get this one over here. And we, because you won, Nick, we're, we're going to find Michael, and we're going to mug him until he, he gives you your prize, okay? So we're going to do that together. So thank you. Let's give everyone a round of applause for Radioactive Nick and Alex for taking part in our little game show here. And now, guys, it's that time. It's the time when we get real for a moment. You know? Th this is the part where the guy takes a seat, crosses his leg, gets on eye level with the audience to show that we're all equals. And now we talk about the big stuff. And the big stuff for me is that I'm very excited about what Monero has in the future. Because we have a great cause, great people, great ideology, great technology, and a passion to pursue what is not present in this world. And we want to make it a reality somehow. We've got people like Anonymous who are approaching it from the physical, from the physics, the philosophical, uh, different type of stuff. We've got people that are working to, with the technologies that we have now. Heck, we've got a bigger ecosystem that does include things that are, you know, commonly pushed down on like Zcash and, and, you know, anything to me that pushes privacy forward globally. Even if it's a bust, at least we know something not to do and we can learn from it, right? So in a, in a sense, there's appreciation across this entire space because we are all moving towards a world where we can have hard currency. We're all moving towards a world where we don't have to worry about passive surveillance looking at every single little facet of our lives. De the decentralization of blockchain, the trustlessness of this system, and cypherpunk ethos of putting this type of cryptography and math on multiple levels of infrastructure to reduce the attack surface of human corruption 
And that is such a great goal, something to move towards. And we will always, and this is, this is what separates for me Monero from all these other things, is that if the price tanks, we will still have people with that ideology who will still be working on Monero. And that cannot be, that the same cannot be said for many of the other coins who are in here to make money. If the price tanks, well, their entire goal is gone. And they're going to just try something else. And, you know, let them do their thing and let them do their thing in peace. And we can call them scams and, and laugh at them behind their back. But us, together, we can, I believe, get closer and closer, day after day, year after year, to this goal. And it doesn't matter if you're a developer or a designer or a marketer or whatever you are. You could be a, you could be a nobody. I used to be a nobody. Okay, I, like, I... Monero was my first open source project, and I got involved early 2017. I was not a nerd before that. I didn't do any of the nerdy things. And then I, got in, I actually got into this um, because I started a business to make websites, and I wanted to find a niche to make money, right? And I remembered looking and, and finding Monero's website, and it was really, really, really bad. It was really bad like most open source websites are. And, but, and so I'm like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see about redoing this website. And then I started reading. And I started reading. And I started seeing this stuff, can, this stuff can change the world. This stuff can help people in oppressed countries. I've got family in oppressed countries. I can get money to them. They can get money to me. They can shield their money from oppressive governments. This is massive. And I started reading more and getting involved more and reading more and getting involved more. And, and the reason I say this is because I want myself to be an example. You don't have to be, you don't have to have all the information. You don't have to be in the know in everything. Because I wasn't. I didn't know what IRC was until like eight months ago. I'm serious. And I had never used Git until like nine months ago. Ask Anonymous. He spent many tortured hours trying to get me to use it correctly. And I learned this stuff. You know, and, and there's a learning curve and that type of thing. But dude, you don't have to have it together. You don't have to know everything. As long as you have that passion, as long as you have that ideology, that desire to see the world made a better place through cryptography and mathematics, which is what Monero does, then we could use you. And even if you have things you disagree with us in, in your ideology, well, this hurts people on the fringes because of proof-of-work carbon emissions. And we're trying to help people on the fring fringes. Well, th this is actually a good point. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Because talking about all these, if, if we just got a bunch of yes people in the same room, then we're, we're only going to innovate in one way. But we want to help people. We want to help all sorts of people. So let's have these conversations. Civil conversations, please, because otherwise it just turns into a shouting fest. But let's have them. I was actually just talking with somebody yesterday who was talking about proof of work, proof of stake, you know, that, that whole little argument. And their core value was keeping the earth safe and keeping it okay. And this is a legit viewpoint to come from. Um, proof of work stake is still not a great way to secure a coin, but I can understand where their core value was coming from. And it's worth having that conversation. And so to anyone watching this recording, to anyone here right now, and just as we leave, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, all inclusivity and like everyone hold hands and stuff because there are going to be people that are malicious to the project, indifferent to the project, just want to be in here to make money, to can't differentiate Monero from all the other scam coins out there. But there needs to at least be available modes of discussion. And you don't have to know everything for that. We welcome questions. We welcome learning, all that type of thing. And if there's anything that we have learned over these past few days in the Monero Village, it's that real privacy and real security is really hard. It's really hard to achieve. So we need to have these constant discussions. And I, that's, I think everybody who has been in this village, whether you were here for one talk, for multiple talks, because you are becoming a part of this discussion. You are becoming a part of Monero being better with your questions, with your ideas, even if they're completely counter to what we have going right now, you know what? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I want to thank everybody one more time. I, wh how much time do I have left? Forever, right? I'm probably just going to end early. Who cares? What are they going to do? Kick me out? Sue me? 131. Okay, so I got half an hour left, but that's okay. We can start taking down early. Yes. Of course. Okay, sure. And so the rest of the time we can do a QA. and a I'm totally fine with that. Uh, so the question was, uh, there was an article that was released. The source was not given. But if uh, that 5% of the, um, 
the Monero supply is being held by criminals. Is that what you said? And then... Uh-huh. Okay. And so how do we feel about that? Well, there's al first of all, all, there's always speculation about how much is where. But because it's Monero and private, we don't know how much anybody has. So all of this is speculation about where this stuff is coming from. How do we feel about that? I don't know. How do you feel about the fact that the cash in your pocket is just all over the place being used for drugs and being used for uh, all this? I mean, it's, it's the same thing. So I'm going to call SGP, the expert, up here. He's going to answer your question. Sure. I can do anything. So um, yes, it is a concern. Monero has basically two features that make it appealing to nefarious actors to mine, unfortunately. Um, number one being, once they mine Monero, it's very difficult or perhaps impossible to trace where they spend their funds. If they were mining Bitcoin or another transparent cryptocurrency, it would at least they'd at least have somewhere to trace when the funds were moved, where they potentially could be going. With Monero, there's a built-in privacy protections, which, in, it, although privacy protections are appealing to everyone, they're also appealing to criminals, unfortunately, too. Second, Monero also has a more accessible proof-of-work mining algorithm that specifically uh, tries to encourage mining on normal computers. So if someone is trying to operate a botnet, for example, if someone is running nefarious activity, that they could... Um, they wouldn't get much success if they tried to have a lot of computers and mine Bitcoin because they would not make any money off of it. With Monero, they would be far more competitive, so it's one of the choices that they select. As a community, obviously, we completely think it's horrible that these computers are getting infected. Unfortunately, uh, the situation is they have an insecure computer and someone hacks their computer, and one of the things that they choose to do is infect their computer with Monero mining. There are several other things that they can do in this situation. They can send out spam information. Uh, honestly, mining is probably the least thing you should worry about. If they have access to your computer, they, should, they could be logging your passwords. They could be grabbing all your bank account information that you do on there. So, uh, or they could be even doing ransomware. So these are, these are legitimate concerns. It's not that Monero is infecting computers. It's that these computers were vulnerable. They were infiltrated. And Monero is one of the things that they're using this computer for. And so as a result, we have developed, as a community, one of our work groups is actually a Monero malware response work group. This is specifically devoted to helping people whose computers have been compromised and are currently mining Monero, and we've been, we're in the process of making uh, high-quality educational materials for people who don't know what Monero is, are like, okay, what happened to my computer, and how do I fix this problem? So this is the sort of what Diego has put together here. This is the landing page. We've worked together to make uh, very forward-facing, or like uh, very simple to understand uh, mechanisms and actionable things that people can do to fix the problem. Uh, but ultimately, you need to communicate to these people that the reason your, mining, your computer's mining Monero is ultimately because your computer was insecure. And as a result, we have a lot of very simple information. You saw some of the really great pictures that Diego was able to put together just to try and make this uh, easier for normal users to understand and to help alleviate this situation as much as we really can as a community. So we have a specific aspect of a specific part of the Monero community. These are all volunteers that have come together and say, yes, it is a concern that people use proof of work algorithms, especially Monero, because of the reasons I explained earlier, to mine. And they're mining on stolen equipment, essentially. And so we're trying to help users like, take back control of their equipment. And this is some of the resources that we put together. For a variety, you can see we have uh, documentation for several problems, whether it's unwanted in-browser mining, unwanted system mining, or ransomware, which we haven't really seen with Monero yet. But if Monero continues to become more popular, I'm sure, like the WannaCry attack with Bitcoin, I'm sure we'll see more similar attacks with Monero in the future. So 
Unfortunately, it's very difficult to tell who is mining who, is, who is mining what, especially in a botnet situation. Because until you know it's a botnet, unless you're able to identify it in certain ways, in many cases it looks like a standard computer is mining. Like if, if, if some, you can think of it this way. In a case, suppose one of your friends comes over, over to your house, plugs a USB drive into your computer and starts mining. How do we tell as a network that that's bad traffic? It, or is it you just legitimately interested in mining Monero? It's very difficult. Many mining pools have strict policies such that once they realize that something is nefarious, they will prevent all payment to that address and not accept any of those hashes anymore. I know Support XMR, which is one of the largest Monero pools, has a strict no botnet policy. Um, on, it's hard to prevent that entirely, but there are some steps we can take as a community, and these are some of the things that we've done. Anonymous, it looks like you have to... But I mean, ultimately, I think it does need to be said that Monero is is freedom money, and with a powerful tool, there will always be ways to use it powerfully for evil or for something bad, right? And so, you know, we can, as a community, do what we can to encourage best practices. We can, as a community, do what we can to to create software. So, like, if I was to make a mining pool software from scratch, maybe I'd include stuff that I'd be able to do stuff like that, as if I can. Um, but ultimately, it's up to people designing their own um, their own stuff, and we can encourage them. Hey, please do this, but they don't have to. And that's the freedom that comes with open source. That's the freedom that comes with liberty, period. And so at Monero, we're hyper-focused on that liberty and with the understanding that some people will abuse that freedom. And, uh, there, and that's, a so, that's a social issue that just has not been solved since the beginning of human time. And we're, we're open to suggestions. If you've got great ideas, if you've got great cypherpunk ideas, then by all means, let's do this. Do we have hands for answering this question or for other questions? Okay. Yes. For for the mining pools, you could just uh, do email-based verification before you allow any account to continue mining. Right? So, uh, on a botnet, I mean, they might register with a million different randomly generated email addresses, but. Those tend to be pretty easy to spot, too, and you might only approve human-looking email addresses. The other, th the other thing is that um, the, the mining pools can see the computer IP addresses that, uh, that are mining, right? And if they're residential IP addresses, uh, and there's a bunch of residential IP addresses against a single account, that can look suspicious. So the mining pools can see a little bit of what's going on. Um, the project themselves don't by design, but yeah. there, you know there is some. Th this is the cool part about like the Monero community, by the way, is that you see I'm not up there, I don't know everything, and I'm not answering all the questions. I'm just passing this mic around, and people have answered these questions. Uh, there's one more issue with the uh, surreptitious mining, the malicious mining things that we've been seeing with Monero. Uh, that's going to be inevitable in any permissionless currency. The whole point of a permissionless currency is that anybody can participate at any time, and we can't, hopefully, distinguish between them. And yes, does that mean criminals can participate? Yes, it's unfortunate. But um, personally, I think that the dangers presented to everyday consumers from things like Equifax is a significant bigger, significantly larger danger than malware on random computers throughout Europe and Russia. Um, I'd like a comment on, on this question of malware. Mining a cryptocurrency, and I, I've removed um, Bitcoin mining malware in 2011 from Windows computers, from people who had no idea what Bitcoin was. It is actually one of the least dangerous things you can get on your computer. If you have any kind of cryptocurrency uh, mining uh, malware, one really has to put the emphasis on the security operating system, the type of operating system you're running, um, and the vulnerabilities of that operating system. And it's time to consider, A, do I need to change operating systems? Or B, do I need to secure my operating system? Because quite honestly, and I think this has been said before, if they're mining cryptocurrency, they're stealing your bank account information, they're stealing your credit card information, they're stealing your cryptocurrency if you have cryptocurrency, um, you, you're setting yourself up for phishing attacks. I mean, the list is on and on um, for uh, ransomware attacks. Um, 
So I, I, I really want to emphasize that, that this threat, one has to really take a look at the security of the computer and the security of the operating system. Yes. One thing to note about the cryptocurrency mining problem is, is that a lot of people put a lot of weight on Monero and what's happening with it because they're blaming them. But the reality is is that we should be also looking at a lot of these, I don't know, malware companies that are supposed to be making software that actually protects it. Not a single one of them are actually doing anything to help with this issue. And don't you see that as being a problem? Because like right now, nobody really knows exactly what's going on when new ones are coming out all the time. But it seems that none of the hardware vendors, none of the vendors that do antivirus hardware are doing anything to actually look at what these things do or stop them at all. So, you know, like, you could put it on Monero, but the reality is, is like, when we started getting viruses, we didn't blame Microsoft, we blamed the people that were making the viruses, and we did something, created businesses to stop it from happening. It's important to note that Monero is a neutral tool. I don't blame Mon Monero at all, um, <laughs> but I do um, just wonder, like, so so obviously there's people out there that are going to have insecure computers, right? And there's going to be, hopefully, more and more people that purchase Monero, because I, I'm a huge advocate for Monero. But I wonder if there are, if there isn't this kind of, like, protection that makes sure that, and, and I don't even know how to do it. Um, but um, if there's not this protection to ensure that a single, you know, entity or group of entities isn't m dominating that, is it going, do you guys think that that's going to um, impact the price fluctuations or the stability of the currency itself? I mean, I, I would definitely say it's a variable. There, there's a billion variables in terms of markets, and they're completely irrational. So even if I was to give you a completely rational uh answer to your question that is not to say that the markets will react rationally to a rational answer so in, in terms of the price itself you know it, it's all like it is <laughs> um are there so look, we're going to go ahead and move on from this question because we're going to have to um end here pretty soon this is a great way to waste an hour it really is uh, thank you guys so much for helping me <laughs> get through get through this hour we still have 15 minutes does anybody else have any other questions before we finish because if not, we can end early. Oh, oh, we do have one. Okay, no, I'm sorry. So uh, I like uh, this whole group and just the ideals. That do you, can you put out more info, like for areas like the Bay Area meetups, or you know, uh, you know like maybe in New York, just kind of bring that out. And I think that would kind of open up Monero into a bigger crowd. So. So, so this has been kind of in the works for a long time. The, there, there's been various uh, ideas about how to get things like community calendars and meetups, how to get the word out that these types of things are happening. And it's pretty tough um, because, you know, in, in terms of calendars, we want people to be able to download to their personal calendars, but we want it to still be like, who, well, who has the rights to update this? Who has the right to censor which meetings show up and which ones do not? Um, who are the gatekeepers of these things? You know, if it's on something like a WordPress site or something, well then, okay, the person running that WordPress site gets to choose which ones go up on there or not. Should we just allow anyone to be able to submit one? Well, now we're going to have to be faced with a bunch of spam and different types of stuff and kidnappings. And we don't want to deal with that. So th this, is a very this is a very big thing. And yes, we are working on that. Uh, we're working on getting a calendar. SGP got a, a calendar up, and he's the gatekeeper. And I trust him. He's, he's got a lovable face. So I, I'm, I'm all over SGP. Uh, he, he can go. <laughs> Not that way. He's relax. Um, but OK. OK. Relax. What's up? Yeah, it's in this. This is one of the issues, and it, is it an issue or is it a feature? It's just the information can be so fragmented, and just all the different areas that it can go about that you might miss something if you're not following them all, and not everybody has the time to follow them all. So, if somebody wants to make an aggregator or something like that, by all means, we could use it. Anybody else have a question? Have a comment? Have a criticism? A critique? Any other C word? No. Well then. 
I would just like everybody to give another big round of applause to all the awesome volunteers that made this village happen, that made it awesome, a big success. And I look forward to seeing if we can come back next year. We can have all of the, we, we can have the PA system from day one, from talk one. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? May, yeah, let, let's, let's tell them we were back. To, let's, we were all the way against the wall for several talks. Let's get a bigger room. Let's get a bigger room. Thank you, everybody, for coming. It has been a blast. I have enjoyed every day. Vegas is, you know, it's Vegas, but DEFCON, is, and you know it's DEFCON, but Monero, am I right? <laughs> for B- Blockchain. Thank you so much, because You guys have been awesome. Thank you. You, you guys. You guys. You guys. Okay. Everyone, enjoy the rest of your lives.